Yeah? yeah? Right? Yes. Deal? Boing. Welcome to the Acquia Podcast, Drupal Technology, Community and Business. Welcome to the Acquia Podcast, Drupal Technology, Community and Business. module for that? There, of course there is. Welcome everyone at this extremely interesting hour where I live. Um, we have managed to get four of us online in the three time zones that I think are the furthest apart uh, from each other on the globe um, from our perspective. So uh, I'm Jam. Uh, this is a sort of video live extension of the Acquia podcast where I talk with people every week about Drupal, technology, community, and business, and I really enjoy doing that. And lately, I've been trying to find people to talk with on camera and talk live. And I was chatting with Lee Rowlands way, way far away from me in Australia recently. Hey, Lee, say hi to everyone. And Lee wrote a blog post called Drupal 8 Won't Kill Your Kittens, and I thought that would be, would be a great topic for the conversation. And Lee invited along Tim Plunkett in San Francisco. Tim, are you with us? Yes. Hey, Tim. Hello. And Daniel Vena, who is showing great solidarity with me. We're online. It's midnight in Germany right now. Hi. And uh, just to do the obligatory uh, time zone check, Lee, what time is it? Um, uh, 8, 8 a.m. 8 a.m. So you got up early. We stayed up late. Tim. And I'm still at work. It's 3 p.m. here, so <laughs> Tim's got the Tim's got the easy job, except that he had to ask his boss for an hour to talk with us. So, Lee, let's start with you. How long have you been doing Drupal, and what's your first Drupal memory? Uh, I think I started back in 2008, maybe 2007. I think it was a while before I got a user um, profile. So, I, you know, my Drupal.org account isn't exactly the accurate record, but I was working for the local council here and was building a system to screen in the theatre uh, in the foyer that allowed them to um, roll, you know, roll trailers between, uh, and that could be easily maintained by the, the staff at the cinema. And um, someone who I worked with said, well, we did the same thing with Drupal for the foyer of the actual uh, council, and they said, give it a look. and my first memory was I looked and I saw slash node slash one and I went to look to the file system for a folder called node and I couldn't see it <laughs> and I didn't get it. <laughs> oh dear. Yeah, because I was a static HTML or PHP script person back then and that was 4.7 and I think I put it to one side and didn't look at it again and then I um, started up my own business and I was asked by someone to build a e-commerce site and so I googled open source e-commerce and Ubercart came up and I read on and then I saw Powered by Drupal and I thought, hang on. And so, yeah, I basically started from Ubercart and then moved across to Drupal. Mm, okay. And uh, so Uber, that puts you in Drupal 5.6 territory when you got started? Uh, 5, yeah. 5. The first okay. sites I built were Drupal 5, yeah. Okay. Daniel, how about you? How long have you been in Drupal at this point? I think I'm maybe in there like seven years now. So, yeah. My first moment was Dimitri. I'm not sure whether you, you guys remember the guy. He was 12 at the time, and he helped me when I was maybe 16, and I was a student in there. It was a program where people mentored other students uh, to get involved in the Drupal, and I did one or two projects, and since then, I'm kind of addicted. And yeah, then I continued, and nowadays I'm working as a Drupal developer in my free time and doing normal university stuff in the other time. Right, you're, you're getting closer to graduating now, I, I believe, right? Yeah, yeah, I should be ready in maybe one year. Uh-huh, and then you're going to have to face the cold, hard world of employment. <laughs> I fear, I fear. <laughs> fear. I'm not convinced whether I should do the PhD thing. Aha. Uh -huh. Oh, dear. So, Tim, yeah. the, in San Francisco. Speaking of Dimitri, he's actually a student here now. Aha. Uh -huh. Oh, and, oh, right. So you work at Stanford at the B 
Business School, is that right? The Graduate School of Business. The Graduate School of Business. And Dimitri's studying at Stanford now, too? He's an undergrad freshman now at Stanford. Oh, sweet. Jeez, I remember playing, I remember playing laser tag with him when he was probably 13 or so in, at DrupalCon DC. That, wow, okay. Um, <laughs> Tim, how did you get your start in Drupal? I was hired as a temp worker at my university to work on their website, which was a Mambo site, and they wanted to port it to Drupal, and it was the day, like, the day after Drupal, 5, uh, Drupal 6 came out. Mm. And my first job was to decide whether Drupal 6 was ready, and I had no idea what Drupal was, and so I was reading a bunch of stuff, and everything, I said, went to my boss, and I said, well, it seems like everyone's complaining that there is no views module yet, so we should probably wait and just use Drupal 5. Uh-huh, uh, so, sure. So that was my, so my first site was a Drupal 5 site, um, and then, but I didn't really start contributing till uh, fall of 2010, right? Uh, I was helping out with the end of Bardic, like three months before release. The theme. The Bardic theme, yeah, in yeah. core. So I helped just like fix a couple bugs at the end of Drupal 7. Um, and that was like my intro to core development, and then I started with 8. Right, but you've kind of gone crazy on 8, haven't you? A little bit. <laughs> um, I think Dan Daniel and I are like neck and neck for the most commits. Okay, didn't Dries say something like 5% of all patches in Drupal 8 right now are yours? 5% of commits, yes. 5% oh, yes. of commits, okay. Right. So let's start off with the next question and just stick with you for a second. What, um, so... Thanks for all your contributions. It's really great that you got excited about it. What are the sort of things that you 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 do as a contributor to to Drupal? Um, well, I started when I first started with Core. Actually, I just worked on what they call backporting a patch. So someone would write the code for Drupal eight, and then we'd want the same fix for Drupal seven. So I would just I wouldn't actually have to write any new code. I just have to find where things changed and just move the code around. So I'd end up learning a lot by doing very little. Um, and then I worked from there, and then I, I guess I moved right into the views in Drupal Core stuff. And then we wrote, rewrote views for Drupal Core and had to learn most of the other subsystems in Core because views does everything. Yeah, it, then, it, it's, it's it touches everything. Octopus, sure, yeah. Right. And then when we, we you know, theoretically finished views in October, we had a team of four really, really, really experienced core devs with nothing to do. So we worked on CMI, and we worked on Whiskey, and we worked on Scotch, and you know the four of us are in the top six as far as commits are concerned. Wait, so name check those four again. Okay, so we have me and Daniel, and Damien Kloip, Damien Lee, and yep. XJM, Jess. Uh, right. That's the VDC team. Okay, so you guys got done quick and then, and then started... Firefighting for the other teams, I guess. Yes, effective. So uh, that's basically what happened. Cool. So, so Danya, um, I love the bit in the paragraph that you sent me about yourself uh, today or yesterday, where uh, you saw that Earl Miles was spending too much time answering support questions, so you decided to take over that for views, so that he could work on code. Um, so. Uh, I guess you know a lot about views too. What else? What else really gets you excited in in Drupal? What do you like to do? Well, these days I'm really excited about the new Whiskey initiative, and especially about the menu system and all this. Well, for me it's interesting. So I'm that's basically my motivation why I'm doing Drupal. That's it's interesting for me, and there's some some challenges all over the place. So that's why I'm contributing. Uh, challenges in, in terms of, of uh, coding, yeah. intellectual challenges, right? Well, yeah, for sure coding or, or talking with people, convincing or to, uh, trying to reach the best solution at the end, and also try to make compromises. So, uh, I don't know, one, one particular initiative like multilingual uh, gets some support, and for, uh, in exchange for that, other people like the VDC team get some support from other people. Yeah, it's all about working together, like a worldwide team. That's awesome. So I'm getting, and, and, and that's, you know, also exactly in the spirit of this crazy open source thing that we all do, right? Lee, 
you. What do you work at Previous Next in Australia? And I know that Previous Next built something very, very cool called AGov, which is um, a Drupal distribution that matches the the needs of government organizations in Australia. Um, I'm really that's a vertical and a space. Uh, the the intersection between government and open source is something that really fascinates me. But um, what else? What do you do in in Drupal? What's your what's your Drupal uh, space particularly? Well, I used to be a contrib developer, and I think I had thirty plus modules in Drupal six and um, seven. Um, okay. and maintained for various levels of maintenance, some poorly, some not at all. Um, you, live, you lived in those issue queues. <laughs> yeah, and look, um, and I did a lot of stuff with Bupacard and Commerce because that's where I kind of came from and a lot of uh, media things. And I kind of sat there in Drupal 6 land and didn't pay attention to what was happening in core and then Drupal 7 came out and I first time I looked at it was when I had a client who asked for a hotel site because I maintained a hotel booking system for Ubercar that needed to be on Triple Seven, and um, so yeah, I had to go on a long car ride, and I saved the massive change notice page or the the, the handbook page on Drupal.org about upgrading six point X to seven point X modules, and it was a three hour car trip, and I think it took three hours to read, and that was the day I subscribed to the RSS feed for Call. And oh. You know, I said, never again am I getting that far behind. Okay. Um, and so that was my motivation to get involved. Um, and so as part of that site, there was a bug with um, theme suggestions for page templates. And so I wrote a patch for that, and it got knocked back because it needed tests. And so then I started looking into tests. And, yeah, I kind of stayed around the fringes watching issues and watching other people. And then uh, Sun posted an issue, make, call, maintain it and it was basically saying that there's too much and too few people. And I jumped into IRC and I spoke to uh, CHX, and he said, well, we need someone to look after forum module. And I said, all right, I'll do it. And I think um, after that, he was like commented, oh, there was this guy in IRC who was going to look after forum module. Ha, ha, ha. You know, <laughs> what a sucker. But, yeah, I took it on. <laughs> we, we all thought the and, same thing. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I took it on, and... Uh, you know, and so keeping forum up to date with all the changes, um, you know, gave me a great grounding in what was happening in Drupal 8. And then, um, you know, there wasn't much to do, so I um, started working on a few other things. I think I transferred it to CMI, and then I thought, well, how hard can that be? Let's have a look at comment module and transfer that to CMI. And oh. then that turned to be a 1,000-plus <laughs> comment issue. Um, and it took 12 months of rerolls with the help of Andy Post, but that also gave me great exposure to all the core APIs. And so through that, good lord, um, okay. thank you. <laughs> I've kind yeah. of kept, yeah. I mean, I, from that, it gave me confidence to look at other stuff. And I think, you know, you know it's, I okay. Just, same just as just Daniel, enjoy the challenge. Just to be clear, you are still employed, right? Yes. This is I. We get 20% uh, time at Previous Next to work on contributions to core, country, whatever. I thought, and, you were gonna um, say, I thought you were going to say, we get 20% time to do uh, our work. <laughs> uh, a, lo a lot of us actually match that 20% in our own time as well. Um, oh. So, yeah, it's more Fantastic. Yeah. This, this, particular, this particular discussion, um, I got really inspired by a blog post that you wrote, um, let's see, uh, almost a month ago. And that blog post is called Drupal 8 Won't Kill Your Kittens. Um, so apparently you did a presentation at the Drupal Melbourne meetup and talked about uh, what's coming in, in Drupal 8. And um, I'd be really interested to get your take on, you know, the contents of that presentation and then maybe uh, dive into things like the stuff that you touched on in, in, in your presentation. And then um, I'd really like Daniel and Tim to jump in and, and help out with this too. So my hope for tonight is that we can talk through uh, some of the architectural changes that have been going on in Drupal 8 and um, why they're good news and how people can understand them and learn more about them. Does that sound like a good plan? Yeah. Sure. Yep. Well, um, the presentation itself, came about because 
um, Brian Gilbert, who is Reality Loop, runs the Melbourne Drupal Meetup down there, was looking for presentations and there'd been a few um, high profile discussions around that week around um, the Drupal 8 development experience and I wanted to kind of share my thoughts on some of the wins that were coming with Drupal 8 and I mean I, I work with Drupal 7 all day building sites and you know Drupal 8 is kind of where I get to do the fun stuff and there were a lot of things in Drupal 8 that I, I couldn't wait for like um, you know I do, dealing with shortcomings in Drupal 7 on a daily basis that I was sort of you know I want it now type stuff and in particular the plugin stuff and the entity field API changes so that was my motivation for that um, talk and yeah I wanted to I mean we do a lot of um, introspection and, and um, critical analysis in open source of, of Drupal and that's what makes it great but sometimes I think we don't stop and celebrate the wins and that was kind of the motivation there. All right guys um, thank you so much for taking the time uh, to talk with me today tonight this morning this afternoon uh, it's been really really informative I am hoping that a lot of people will come and watch us on YouTube in the next weeks. It's certainly been enlightening and uh, enjoyable for me. Um, my shameless plug is that I release a podcast on aqui.com slash podcasts once a week towards the middle of the week and I have lots of conversations like this uh, and with people in and around all sorts of aspects of Drupal and open source and I'd love it if you'd come and uh, download those and listen um, and uh, let's see. So that's me from the Acquia podcast out. Thank you very much. Thank you Daniel Vena, Lee Rollins, Tim Plunkett. Thank you so so very much for, for taking the time to talk with me and I will see you sometime soon I hope. Thanks. Good night guys. Take care. Good night. Bye. Bye. Bye.